her take it whenever you're, well, wait, wait for Swaggy to get back in the frame and then take it whenever you're. Right, part of. Uh, we back. We are back. Hey, hey, listen. I, before we start. I got a mic. I got a new mic, bro. I see it. But, <laughs> but you know what? You know what? You've been doing a lot of things out of character lately. You know what I'm saying? Flying to New York for one day. Elvis, Elvis, I'm trying to tell you, you had a fantastic football season. I mean, you was must-see TV. But when they opened up Disneyland for you early and you went up there and did your thing, and all of a sudden now you're a celebrity, your beard looked different. It's, it's, I just need to know what the hell is going on. I got that celebrity swag on me. Okay. <laughs> Look, I told I told you and I told everybody last week I'm a celebrity now. I'm I'm perp. I'm done not owning it. I am a celebrity. I expect <laughs> I expect to get in restaurants and not wait in line. If I go to the club, I expect to walk right in. Okay. Um I my my bank account ain't got to the private jets yet, but I'm on my way. All right. <laughs> The other thing is this too. This is what this is what being a celebrity helps you with as well, man. You get great service. The service is phenomenal. I just that makes me feel like a celebrity more than anything when I get that service, man. Dude, dude, I had I had a phenomenal day trip to New York. I mean, it was it was overnight, but it was quick. No, and, no. and 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 the way I'm riding. The way I'm riding in the in the in the black SUV, you, you know it. what I'm saying? Like tinted windows. The in the in the passenger seat in the back seat with the seat pushed all with the seat way. pushed back with the seat. <laughs> like I was laying back, perk. I hit my iPad on. I'm just riding by, by yourself though, and, it, and it's it's just it's just like and the, you, and the and the driver didn't even call me Marcus Spears. What he called? Call me Swaggu. Oh, I'm a celebrity. I'm a celebrity, bro. <laughs> that's when you know, hey, that's when you know you didn't hit it. That's when you well, know. You know, that's enough. That's enough about me. Hey, hey, look. Hey, bro, listen. I've been missing you. I'm. T- I tell you this all the time. It's been a lot going on. It, a lot. It's a lot that we probably could dive into. I know people want to address the Jawan Howard situation, want us to talk, but we don't need to talk about that. Nah, I saw you talking about that already. That's been handled. You yep. know what I'm saying? It's other things that we got to talk about, and we got to go back to our roots, back down there to New Orleans, baby. Baby. And find, and find out. I need to hear from you, because we. it's crazy, because on one of our first episodes, we already addressed this. Yep. Okay, and now we're addressing this young man again, which is unfortunate, in Zion Williamson and his un- unprofessionalism. And one of our guy, our colleagues, our brother, J.J. Reddick, who played with him, called him out on national TV about his lack of professionalism and not being a great teammate, not reaching out to C.J. McCullough when he first got traded up, but ha- but reaching out after the fact that he called him out on it. And look, I was his teammate. I can describe him as a detached teammate. That that is that is an accurate statement. This is something I addressed with Zion in front of the team. Okay, so I like this is going back to his rookie year. There, there's a responsibility that you have as an athlete when you play a team sport to be fully invested you're fully invested in your body you're fully invested in your work and you're fully invested in your teammates that is your responsibility so i need to hear what you need got to say about it i need to hear about what you got to say about it. i need to hear it. well i'll say this first first of all oh, oh i wanted to tell you something real quick. what's up what's up i got i got a package on the way to you what yeah, I got a package. You know, I like gifts. You know, I like gifts. I just have to tell you that. But go ahead, go ahead. I got a package on the way to. Oh, I start before I start. I saw you on that sideline at the All Star game too. You, you, you and Dominique got that ass whooped, but you look good up there, bro. You look good. <laughs> yeah, wow. Dominique, Dominique was over there just cool, he just cooling. Just, yeah, he was just cool. Cool. He, he was trying to coach. Yeah, he one of them old school players that get the the clip of. Uh, Fingernail, fingernail. <laughs> yeah, 
Low key, I do too. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it though. Kinda, it's kind of nice. It's it's okay. It's what I started doing when I became a celebrity. Hey, I'm it's okay. Me. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay. So look, I need to hear. I need let me to hear. dive in, man. Let me dive in because because you you're right. This is something we talked about with Zion. Now, what I will what I will back off Zion about is if if it was some impression that because he was the first overall draft pick that he was supposed to be a leader. Perk, we didn't already told these people just because you good at something don't mean you a leader. Okay, Come it on. don't mean you gonna go in the locker room and galvanize everybody. And everybody gonna follow you. That take time, all right. But I also think Zion is the definition of when you are drafted that high and you come in and work hard. It's easy for dudes to follow you, right? And you and and then you can set the tempo of the culture. Like people forget, Brandon Ingram is the is the max guy on that team, mm. right? So so regardless of a, of of. Who else is on that team with the Pelicans? It's going to be about Zion Williamson until it's not anymore. And I think that's the I think that's what he needs to hear. Now, look, if he want to get out, here's here's my thing about getting out, right? You can want to leave New Orleans. You can want to leave the Pelicans. You don't, I don't know what it is. I'm not, I'm not breaking any news about Zion wanting out. I think the consensus is that's what everybody thinks is that he want to get out of there. But what I will say is, yeah, what I, what, what I, what I, what I will say is, you think somewhere else you ain't going to have to work? Mm. You think going somewhere else you ain't going to have to get yourself right Come on. And, 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 and play at a very high level? Come on. The one thing I know, bro, the one thing I know is that in order to make it in professional sports, when you get up there, it's about your work. It ain't about your skill set or your talent. It's your work. Because the skill set and the talent is what got you there. The work is what keep you there. So I always, I always, I've always had a problem with Zion Williamson in this regard. And then I'm going to give you the floor. Stop being a baby, bro. You're a professional athlete. It's time to take control of everything that you can possibly control. Yeah, we got teams. And we got people around us because we can't manage and do everything that people are asking us to do. Even in our situation now, being on television, we got to have people to do things that we not day to day doing. All right. Yeah. That ain't because I want to be like, I know we joke about a celebrity. That ain't because I want to be a celebrity. That's because I have so much on my plate. I can't manage it all by myself. Right. All right? So if you Zion Williamson and you done been handed, like we talked about this the first time, you've been handed the keys to a city by default. When they drafted, they was making commercials, Perk, they was doing, they like every, they want him to be the, the man during Mardi Gras, all of this. Not, not, not just the keys to the city. He was handed the keys to the NBA. To the they, NBA. They, okay, keep going. They, keep they going. wanted him to be the face. No. Now, yeah. obviously we know Jai is trending in that direction. No. Along with Luka Doncic, and yes. but we know Jai from that particular class is headed in that direction. I want to say this about Zion: as a guy that dealt with weight, as a guy that had to deal with that, that had to do extra to make sure I was in shape and ready to play. Come on, say, bro, commit to this window. I'm gonna say it again. Mm. Commit to this window, bro. You are ne- you you ain't gonna be in a position to make this type of money ever again in your life, mm. unless you use this to materialize into other things. And here is the one thing, the one problem I have with Zion and how he's conducting himself more than anything. Perk, I'm not even thinking about basketball. Talk to me. Your guy, my guy, LeBron has made over a billion dollars in his career because of his ability to play basketball. Zion Williamson came out of high school with the same type of hype. He went to Duke with the same type of hype and was drafted with the same type of hype. Mm -hmm. Don't look back 15 years from now, Zion, and talk about what you could have did. Because you headed in that direction, big fella. 
And regardless of if it's in New Orleans or if it's somewhere else, you're going to have to commit to the work, big dog. Yes. That's what it boils down to. You're yeah. going to have to ingratiate yourself with a franchise and a team if you ever want to become the leader. And more importantly, on the court, playing the game, you got to become something you probably never been in your life. Because you on a level playing field now. It's yeah. equal now. They don't look, dudes don't look at you when you walk in NBA arenas and say, oh, that goes on. They mm -hmm. don't say that no more. Because no. everybody's saying that about all of them as well. So, man, you better lock in and think about all of the, the possibilities you have, not only on the floor, but off the floor. Don't throw your money in the trash can, bro. It's about the bag. I don't care what nobody say. They listen to this podcast. They know they get it wrong. Man, get your ass in shape. And get ready to play so you could get every single dime that's coming your way. Mm -hmm. all, right, all of the accolades, the Hall of Fame, NBA championships, all of that is great. And that's great banter to argue amongst ourselves. But ain't a ring, a championship, a double-double, a triple-double ever paid no damn bills. Zion, you better go get your money. All of that results in you getting your money. But you got to lock in, bro, and focus on your bag. And, and focus on what you need to do to get the ultimate bag as opposed to living in the right now and I'm unhappy, I don't want to do the thing. Get your ass right, man. Go ahead. Uh, uh, oh, you miss me. You miss me. Because when you come over here preaching like that, I could tell. But he, he, here's, the, here's the thing, bro. You brought up all great points. And I'm going to start with the one point that you brought up for us with the pressure the word pressure, yeah. and this is why I keep telling people when you talk about LeBron James and you talk about the word pressure, nobody has ever had that much pressure in their life. Yeah. And now you have a guy in Zion who is now showing us that he's a prime example of he can't handle or he can't handle the pressure. You're right. He's You're not even absolutely. with his organization right now. Okay, he's 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 from them. Nobody even knows. Nobody nobody's nobody's even communicating with Zion. He's not even communicating. We just talked about uh how he, it, it took for CJ to say something for him yeah. to actually reach out. So it goes back all the way to the Duke days, in my opinion. And I'm not about to sit up here and let Coach K off the hook either. I got you because I got you. Okay, because for the simple fact. It's been a, a lot of uh, things that have transpired since being that Duke. We talk yeah. about si certain situations where he was battling a lawsuit for us with money. Coach K, Coach K, you're, the, you're, you're probably the greatest basketball coach of all time. Okay, all up there in the conversation. How did you not set this man up with any type of resources from the roots of it when he touched down onto your campus? And I'm not... I'm not, it's not no knock on Coach K, but we got to keep it 100. We got to yeah. hold everybody accountable. Now, Zion, yes, he was a, a young man, but at the end of the day, you this young man coming out of high school, he had more ESPN games than the Sacramento Kings, uh, the Washington Wizards, and uh, uh, the, the Detroit Pistons combined. Yeah. Combined. Yeah. So, so now. Box office. So now we get to this point and all these rumors are out here talking about, oh, he want to leave. He want to be in a bigger market. He want to be in New York, all this and whatever. He'll be able to excel and make more money. That is not true. Because if you got that dog in you and your mentality is right, that small market stuff don't mean a damn thing. And I'm going to give you a prime example on how. LeBron James went to Cleveland. Cleveland Small was market. a big market. He turned, he still made his money. He still made Cleveland relevant, notable, yeah. all those things. You go to Giannis. Milwaukee ain't no damn big market. Okay, what Giannis doing? Maximizing over there. Why? Hard work, coming up, doing what he's supposed to do on the basketball court, all of, crossing all the T's and dot the I's. Perfect. Perfect. KD was in Oklahoma City. I know. You and was John, there. And, jo and Russ John was there. James Harden was there. The bottom line is, bro, Hooper's hoop 
Hooper's hoop. Hooper's if, hoop. If, if you love the game. If you love the game. If or do you love the stuff that come with the game? See, that's, that's what the pros separate. The pros separate. The yeah. The pros separate the, the ones that want to be famous and have the chains and all of the stuff that come with the outside perception of being in the NBA. But the real hoopers, the first and foremost is this basketball court. We can say all we want to say about LeBron. We can say all we want to say about MJ or Kobe or KD. We can say all we want to say about them dudes. The main thing was the main thing <laughs> for them. With, with, with everything going on, the main thing was the main thing. And some dudes special. Some dudes can focus on other things and still play at an elite level. We've seen LeBron do it. We, we know KD got 35 ventures. We know all of that. Bottom line is, bro, you in your fourth year? Yes. Yes. It, eligible for a rookie extension that could set them up for generational wealth. But let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What 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 is the difference? He's in his third year, going into his fourth year, but this season is almost over anyway. But look, let me ask you this: What is the difference between him and John Morant's situation? Both of them in small markets. John ja love the hoop. Ja just turned. He just made Memphis so relevant that he forced us to talk about him on TV. Sure he is. forced he forced our network to put uh, Memphis on 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 the schedule. When they wasn't even on there. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. So at the end yep. of the day, but I'm going to tell you this. Ja got a lot of people in his corner that tell him what he needs to hear and not yep. what he wants to hear. Want to hear. I, and let, and me, let me say this for let me say this for all our listeners. All right. Let me make this very clear. Make you it. damn right we comparing Zion to Ja. You damn right. Before you start asking, well, what they ain't the same player, they ain't nope. We expected Zion to actually be the guy we talking about as opposed to Jai. Now, I got to give my brother love because you said yeah. you would have took Jai when, yeah. you, when that draft happened. But yeah. ultimately, Perk, we're not going to disregard what we saw from Zion Williamson. The difference is a hooper in Memphis loves the hoop. Loves the hoop. Bro, and, and I'm going I'm to I'm end on this. I'm going to end on this. Two things. One, his count, along with David Griffin and everybody in the front office of the Pelicans, right? They got to have a, a, a coming to Jesus meeting. And they got to sit at the table and they got to be honest with one another. And they got to get this thing on track. And Zion, I don't know who is in this corner, who's telling him what to hear. But let me tell these people out here something real quick. You cannot get direction or, or or you cannot get information from people that never did what you're trying to accomplish. It just don't happen. So that means moms, that means dads, that means uncles, that means whatever the case may be, how can they give you any type of information or direction when they never been there? It just can't happen, okay? And then the last thing, the last thing, here's the last thing, uh, Swaggoo, was Zion. I hate to say it, but I knew it was going to happen, bro. You said it. I was, I was at the draft combine. You said it. Before I was, before I was deciding whether or not I was going to become a coach or join or become an analyst, I was at the draft combine coaching. And guess what Zion was having delivered to his room? Two old pizzas that he was eating. And I said to myself right then, I said, hey man, you know what? He already starting off on the wrong foot. And I tried to warn the world, but people didn't want to listen. So that's neat to hear that. The fact of the matter is, is this, whether Zion wants to be there or not, you know what I mean? Right now you are a Pelican. Perk, right now. To your point, that does not matter. You a Pelican right now, bro. Show right up. Right now. And you haven't you you haven't done anything on the court outside of some highlights to to stomp the yard about what you want to do and what you want other people to do. Can I can I ask you something? I'm here to answer it. I, I just want to know. I don't understand why is it so hard, and 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 this what this is what people in life gotta realize. Why is it so hard if you see somebody? 
succeed that something you're trying to succeed at and doing it at its best and being great at it. I don't care what profession you in. Why are you not trying to reach out to that person and get up under that person wing and find out what the hell they need to, you need to do to get to that level? That's the like everybody have this big old competition or oh no, nah, I ain't doing it. I'm my own man. That they scared to pick up the phone, pick up the phone and call man. LeBron James and ask him, hey man. How can I clean this up? What did you do? Ask for advice. It's not wrong with having a mentor, dog. Right, Forget the, you. all these. You you know you know what people you know what people worried about. People worried about those social media trolls that don't have a job that yeah, sit in the crib all day smoking that loud and and commenting and they want to please them. Hey, now nah, please yourself. And I'm about to go to my. I'm about to go to my phone. Let me let me let me show you something. Let me let me let me let me. I, I tweeted something, um, and I gotta read it because what you just said make all the sense in the world. Go ahead. Um, I was on Twitter, Perk, and I was looking at you know looking at everything that was going on in sports and the Jawan thing, and I saw like the back and forth. I tweeted a day ago. Y'all better stop treating this app like it's real life. Got to stop doing it. All right, and, and here's the thing, bro. Here, here's here's the thing, based on what you just said. I'm, I'm gonna put this out there, I ain't gonna say no names. When I made my trip to New York, I had a chance to be around an icon for like two hours. I'm talking about a real live icon. I'm not talking about like somebody, I'm talking about when you say this person's name, the whole world knows their name. Yeah, not just yeah. the US. Had a chance to be around an icon. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't go in there enamored I was I was I was honored. I was I was in a in a in a in a role where I wanted to pay homage to the work that this person, this individual has done. But to your point, Perk, I asked every question I could imagine. What? Ask, how did you get here? How do you get here? What was it like? What do you do now? What's your day like? What when you wake up in the morning? Is it as complex as I'm thinking or is it as simple as things coming to you and you making them happen? I was asking everything. You know why? Because to your point about Zion, what you just said, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Mm. I already know it work. You've shown through a lifetime of work that it works. So I just need your wisdom. Now your I'm going to put my personality, I'm going to have my spin but I need the wisdom that you got in order to be better. I'm not in competition with you. Not in That's competition with you. And, yeah. and let me ask you this, how old are you? I'm 38, bro. You, bro, you 38 years old and still looking for wisdom. Hell yeah. And still learning. So look, you, you know what, listen, hey man, hey look, to Zion and to all these people out there, I hope that y'all get it right. Yep. Because I'm telling y'all right now, like you said earlier, this window is very short, short. and it goes by extremely fast. And guess what? It's a it's a lot of guys coming every single year that's coming in that they will they will feel that slide and keep it moving. Okay, it's cool. It's still true. It's still true. Let me say this. I tell my son this now because both of our sons hoop, and they and and they didn't they not growing up like we grew up. But I, talk, I tell my son all the time, it's a kid somewhere in a dark drip, dark gym where the roof is dripping water and his parents can't afford to put him on an AU or a Nike summer league team. But when he get that opportunity and he see you, there is nothing you're going to be able to do from stop to stop him from getting to where he want to get. So you better work like your mm. pole, boy. Man. That's what I tell him all the time. And I'm going to leave it at that. Zion, you got to go back to when you was growing up and you didn't have nothing. That mentality got to kick back in, bro. All right. Yes. All right. All right. I'm glad you All said right. something about AU real quick. Let's address something. Yeah. Man, yeah. Hey, man, look, I'm, I'm going to these tournaments and Woo. I'm watching I'm watching these old ass kids play in younger divisions. The reclasses. Because, because their parents are reclassing them. Now, 
Here's the thing, okay? Here's the thing. I actually don't have a problem with reclass if you're reclassing your kid because he's not mentally there in life. 100%. But I have a problem with you reclassing your kid for sports reasons. Just that extra a year kid. ain't gonna ta- ain't gonna make them go to the NBA, y'all. Ain't gonna that, make. Per, can we just tell them? Just tell, like, tell them, because I don't want to say it, because it's you know, you know, it's basketball. I don't want to say it. Tell them what that extra year ain't gonna do. It ain't gonna help you at all. <laughs> it, and matter of fact, matter of fact, let me tell you something. It's actually hurting your kid. And let yes, me tell you is. why. Let me tell you why. Because what you're teaching your kid is to run from adversity. Yep. You're teaching your kid to run from the grind. You're teaching your kid to say, oh, okay, this is this is actually what you're teaching your kid. I call it false success. Yeah. And my question so, is, my question is, bro, uh, what you gonna do if the if the year you reclass them don't work and he don't get no scholarship offers? What you gonna do then? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sick. Of, I'm sick Bro, of these. I feel, when we were when we were growing up, it was like uh, Virginia military. You got you go to you go play an extra year in a league with dudes your age, your level. These was hoopers, like the school that T Mac went to and Marquise Daniels. All right. of those dudes, we played the uh, Hargrave, Virginia Hargrave, and we we that was our kind of like it wasn't even a reclass. You just you went after your high school or you went after your junior year and you went to these schools where you focused obviously on education, but you stayed on campus so they could give you a college-like atmosphere. Yep. You played basketball like it was a college team. And these do preparatory schools, that's the word I've been looking for, Perk. Yep. I understand prep schools. I understand the concept behind a prep school. But for you to hold your kid back in seventh grade, because you don't want him to go to eighth and then be a freshman because you think he going to go to the NBA because you bought him 12 more months, you lying to yourself. To yourself. All right, go ahead. You lying to yourself. We played – we bro, it was so crazy that with the Houston Hoops, it was actually tournaments that we played up. We wanted yeah. this – but but that's need to hear that. Forget that. But since we was on the NBA, I needed, we need to direct our focus – and put it towards the Dallas Mavericks. CSX Transportation is an industry leader on the move. The railroad company has immediate openings for freight train conductors. Join the CSX team and start your paid on-job training today, earning nearly $25 per hour with no degree required. If you're safety focused with the passion for great service, you've got what it takes to move your career forward at CSX. Apply at CSX.com slash careers. That's CSX.com slash careers. CSX is an equal opportunity employer. Mark Cuban had all this praise about Luca, a guy that he paid over $200 million about to, about getting in shape. Like, let me let, let me start on this, okay? <laughs> First of all, if you paying the guy you're over too bro. much, you disgusting. Huh? You're disgusting. Yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. And and, and, the, <laughs> and the crazy thing is, bro, I I I hate it. The reason I'm disgusted is because I actually like Mark Cuban. I yeah. think he's actually for he's one of the best thing. owners when it comes down to. When he gets to speaking about social justice, I love his energy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. now when he comes out and said th- says things like this, this bothers me. You just paid a man $200 million. It's no praising him about getting in shape. He's supposed to be in shape. Like, see, that's the thing, that's the thing like that we took for granted with guys like Cole and MJ and things and Larry Bird. Like, Bro, we didn't even rob a parish. Like, like they got better. Like they Russell. got better. They got better we, after the bag. Bro, they got better. They got, they got better, better after, after, and they worked harder after the bag. We, we never had to talk. Like, we never had to. We never right. look. We never even heard stir, stories about them, bro. About them having conditioning problems or losing nope. weight. Like nope. it was never none of that. Nope. None of that. So when I hit this about. Like when I hear Mark Cuban say, 
yeah, Luca's playing his way, made he's feeling great, which he's balling. He hooping. He, he is balling. He was hooping I mean, when he was fat. Yeah, he, right. But, but, bro, he's actually driving through the lane dunking. Stuff. Dunking now. Yeah. Two hands, swinging yeah. from the floor. But, but I'm going to hear the address, Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban, listen, I love you. But come on, bro. Like, we're not doing giving out no false flowers to somebody that you paid $200 million to about five years in shape. Doing what he's supposed to be doing. No. Brody, listen, no. I, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Because, but but let me say this. Let me say this too. Shout out to Luca because we can't come off of LeBron. I mean Zion conversation. Like ultimately, Mark Cuban praising Luca for something he should be doing. We all agree with that. But also, like shout out to Luca for doing it. Oh, like oh. shout out to you for getting getting you, in right. shape. You, you know, right. and working working yourself into being a. But but you remember when we talked about this the first time, Luca Luca even acknowledged that I ain't where I'm supposed to be, mm -hmm. and that's the first step. That's what I ain't heard from Zion. I haven't heard Zion take ownership and say it's some things I got to do. For, don't worry about the Pelicans. Don't worry about the people around me, my team. It's some stuff I have to do as a man that's gonna put me in a better situation. So I don't know if Luca team got on him. I don't know if he hired a personal chef. All of that stuff that you have access to, and it's starting to pay dividends on the floor. Because, per once you get past the talent part, you know it's about longevity after that. Yep. Like, how yep. long will you be able to sustain a level of play that's going to keep you in the league? So it seemed like Luca making steps in the direction of not only being the face of the franchise, but being available. Yeah. All right. And being available. So shout out to Luca for it, but I'm with you, man. Like, but but you and I are different. You and I are different in that regard. And this is something that I've always respected about you. We don't expect people to praise us for the stuff we're supposed to be doing. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't just like I don't worry about the haters, the compliments are the same. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Appreciate yeah. it. Cool. Right up, and, and, and you know, you, you know what's crazy, but look. I'm gonna tell you this too. Luca's so happy Porzingis gone. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, he got a whole he, new energy. He got a whole new energy. And, and, and that was the best thing that the Mavs could have done because yeah. they wasn't speaking to each other. And people thought I was tripping when when Dallas traded for Porzingis. I called him a diva. You said and he people, was a diva, yep. And and now all of a sudden I'm right again because people feel the same exact way. Przingis have a sense of entitlement, but Bro, he's he never came available. out talking about he needed to be the one option. But he's never available. You're never available, and you ain't the one option. You ain't the number one option. But, yeah. but here's the thing, bro. Let me take you down <clears throat> to All Star Weekend. I went there for two days. Cleveland, uh, yo, Cleveland, my behind. I went there for two days, and I got my ass up out of there. The weather was bad. I mean, I don't know who I did was, and I get it, Adam Silver. I love Adam Silver. I saw everybody, him. He, everybody get a chance. Yeah, it, it, yeah, but bro, no. Like, it, it just ruined the whole thing, dog. I mean, you know, you, you don't want to go out there and it's 19 degrees. And Perk, that ain't it. That, that ain't, ain't it. it. They're like, like if, they, if the NBA could take any notes, and if the NFL could take any notes from themselves, that that Super Bowl weekend, a Super Bowl week in LA, just hit different, buddy. It just hit different when the weather is good outside, bro. It hit so, 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 it hit you know, it's that, about the weather. But, but you know why I want to dive in the All Star weekend real quick? I don't want to talk about how trash the dunk contest was. We all saw wow. that. I don't want to talk about how a big man just won the three point contest and shine like new Shout money. Yeah. I don't want to talk about Steph Curry putting on the show, dropping the 50 piece wing dinner, cage of rub. I don't want to talk about LeBron Big James man. hitting the game winner back in Cleveland. I don't want to talk about MJ showing up and everybody getting lit up, even oh, the, the legends themselves. Yeah, I told yeah. you this earlier. I said, man, did you see Magic Johnson? He was giggling like MJ was tickling. <laughs> Like, that's when you know you got a different type of presence, right? Perfect. But I do want to say this. I'm so happy that Paul 
Ray and KG. Oh man, yes, man. Came together just, and I don't even care if it was just for a photo, because you know what? With that photo means that it was some type of conversation. Something. So at the end of the day, let me let me address everybody out there and let y'all know that touched me in a different way, bro. Real it talk. It should. It should. You you was there. Because it we should. Spoke. This is not only guys that we want. I want a champion that we want a championship with together. But we spent Thanksgiving together. We spent Christmas together. We spent Halloween together. I'm talking about all of us collectively at Ray House. Yeah. So whatever basketball decisions were made and how they went down, I don't even give a damn about that because at the end of the day, our brotherhood and what we built in Butu is way bigger than that. And we all grown. We grown, retired, and we got kids that's about to be grown in yeah. out of high school. So here's the thing that I want to address, though. The Celtics, and I love the Celtics organization. With Grossbeck, Steve Pagliuga, they came to my wedding, dog. Mm -hmm. I love them. They, 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 like, I love them. They love the them. Guys. But I will say this. They have to put an end to the pettiness as well. And I'm going to tell you why. Paul got his jersey retired. KG getting his jersey retired in a few weeks. Hey, man. Retire Ray Allen. Retire Ray Jersey, man. Yeah. Like, he like, like, it. Oh, hey, let's let's everybody just stop with the bull. Yep. Yep. Now, and, and and retire Ray Allen Jersey, man. Here, here's the thing. Here. Here's the thing. Because I like what you said, bro. Um, let's move on for good. Like, let's not move on just for the sake of moving on. Let's move on to make it better. Right? So I'm with you. I'm with you on that. And, and to your point, when I saw that picture and you put high haters, you know I know you know I know a lot of the history of it talking to you, and, and, and knowing knowing the stories. Here's what here's what I what I think, and here's what we we need to continue to do on this podcast. Stop kicking your brothers out the house, man. Like sometimes you got to cut ties, but that don't mean I gotta hate you. Yeah. Sometimes you got to say, hey, man, we don't rock like we used to. And I understand why. But I don't have to hate you or hate things that you trying to do. I wish you all the best. Let's 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 be able to separate from each other without wanting to see each other down bad. All right. Let's let's be able to do that. So when that picture came out and you said hi, haters, the message that resonated with me was. Yeah, we got differences. Yeah, we disagree. We don't have, we don't see things the same way. We don't think that things played out the way that they were supposed to play out. Um, got sideways with one cat about a certain situation and, and, and others, vice versa. But ultimately, bro, like, like the picture, and, and it's crazy that it's art, is the fact that when you see Ray and when you see KG and when you see Paul, standing there together as greats in the NBA, top 75 players of all time. You got to feel like let's just let bygones be bygones because it's so much more comfortable not to be beefing with you. Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't, and I tell, I, I try to tell people this all the time, bro. You know, you know, my thing on Twitter is cool. You know, I say that when people come at me crazy, I cool. I, I do. I love it too. Because, <laughs> because Perk, I try to tell people all the time, bro. And it's different in this particular situation. But what you eat don't make me shit, bro. Mm -mm. And 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 I got a I got a certain set of people in my life that I have to answer to and give my emotional energy to. And I ain't got no room for nobody else. So when we when, when 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 all of this stuff going on, and when I see that Ray KG and Paul, I feel like that's the that's the that's the picture of cool, cool. Regardless yeah. of regardless of how we leave in the conversation, cool. cool. Straight right. up. And, and look, look, look. Here's the thing. I was gonna get on the football topic. We'll save that for next week because yeah, well, it's a lot of basketball. Yeah, look, I know you don't want to talk. You're grateful. 
<laughs> you know, you know, hey, you want to know what's funny? Let me tell you how I know you, dog. Let me tell you how well I know you. I sent you a few texts, right? And you was like, you hit the the what you call it and said, LOL, or ha ha, and emphasize it. I said, my dog taking a mental break right mental now. Mental break. And I and I fell back. You but know look, what? While you taking the mental break, I don't know if you watching it right now, but I got to throw this in there. Hey, look, my wife and I just started Bell Air, and I must say, hey, boy, hey, shoot. I'm, I'm, me and the wife in three episodes in. It's good. Hey, hey it's, it's good. good. Look, they got Uncle Phil with some swag. That ain't Uncle Phil, man. Right. They got Uncle Phil when he's young. They got, listen, I, I had to separate Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah. What's going on. But ultimately, it's been a really good show. It's really been an eight. And Carlton, boy. He a ass Carlton the straight up. Yeah, put them hands on it. Hey, hey, but look, this is what I wanted to tell you, though. We got, we, 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 we coming to a close. At, and I know, look, people be asking, can we get two hours? We may do a two hour special, but damn it, we ain't doing it today. Okay, so here's the thing. We got to talk about Imani Bates because it's been flying under the radar. Young and Hooper, young Hooper at Memphis. Young Hooper at Memphis. Yep. That decided to reclass and go up to leave school early. And things haven't panned out for him at all. Matter of fact, it's been a disaster. Yep. So much so that he's away from the team right now. So much so that actually Penny Hardaway been getting a lot of criticism. So much so that all of a sudden the parents are starting to kind of play the blame game. And so what I'm telling people is, is that, listen, man, to, to, to everybody that's out there that want their children to succeed or be a professional athlete, and if your kids want to be a professional athlete and you're supporting them, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Yep. But let it happen organically. Please. Like, don't, don't, don't force the wheel, dog. Like, if it's going to happen, let it happen. It's no skipping steps. It's no shortcuts to get into to that highest level. No way in hell. I don't give a damn. And what happened was, was that they figured it out because they thought that him leaving, him going to Memphis, him going with Penny, that he was going to be one and done. That wasn't the case. All of a sudden, you see some young dogs that feel disrespected. Now you gotta go play against some young, some some JUCO or six year seniors bro, that ain't having that. Let me tell you something, bro. To your to, point, I'm all in. To your point, Instagram don't make you no hooper because you got a lot of followers and you put workouts on there. These these ranking publications don't make you a first round draft pick. They don't do that. How many people following you on TikTok don't make you a real hooper? Mm. You know, I got a young son, bro. I got a daughter, my daughter 14, about to turn 15. I got a son that's 12, about to turn 13. They, they, these, these kids get famous and they actually think they hoopers because a lot of kids like their videos when they playing basketball or in a workout. Bro, it's some, it's some real. Man, there's some it's real dogs real. out there. It's some real dogs out there, dog. And, and so, so he, he, here's the thing, man. I still think Imani Bates have a real legitimate shot of having getting drafted. Not this year, probably. He probably have to wait another two years. But going to the NBA, and I think he will be a hell of a player. But just to to him and and to his circle, hey, yeah. no more shortcuts. Yeah, and, 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 and look, don't force the wheel. No, don't force it. You could have wait. Look, waiting. No, you didn't wait this long. What? Why not wait an extra year? Don't 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 take away a a, a kid, a, a young man, youth. That man didn't even get a chance to experience a graduation, right, yep. a prom, uh, a senior skip day, or none of that because you, you decided to put like and now. You know what? It's messing with his mentality, Swaggoo. Don't rush the process. First Trust all, the process. Perk, 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 let's drop this bomb because we're going to turn this podcast off after this. Let's drop this bomb. <laughs> hey, all you parents out there with these ideas and these things 
that's going to get your kid to the next level or to the league, you ain't film. <laughs> hey, you, you know what? We go, we go in on that. <laughs> we go in on that because you ain't them. Hey, shout out to our kid folks and cousins, man, who've been holding it down, man. Hey, swag group, swag group. Perk, I feel like we had, I feel like we had to give game today. I felt like we had to give. No, no it, it was, it was, it was, it was real. It just some days, to... look, it's part of it, man. Some, some, some days, you know, you go come into this entire space, entire family, and some days you go have these hard conversations. That was oh. one. So and the thing that I love. About it, we do it. We don't yeah. care about doing it either. And I think that need to be the title of this podcast: Hard Conversation. Hard Conversation. Family, we love y'all. We want to. Yeah. We want to rock with y'all. That Swagger and Perk to deliver the number one episode sixteen in the books. This is Swagger and my dog Perk. Peace. <laughs>